Hi, I'm Jim McMahon, Vice President and CRA's Energy Practice. The Clean Power Plan was stayed in February of 2016, but many states and stakeholders are using the plan as a set of guiding principles for the utility or state. If nothing else, many expect federal and state energy policy to shift toward cleaner energy solutions and demand-side reductions, which is largely what the CPP contemplates. At CRA, we're helping utilities and states prepare for a world with carbon limits. Our work has shown that many utilities face sharp rate increases if they're forced into compliance, which can lead to earnings erosion and customer pushback. We work with utilities to define their own path. Pat Augustine, a principal at CRA, explains our overall framework for analyzing utility options. We've been looking at the intersection of electricity and environmental markets for many years, and our models and our decision frameworks uh, allow our clients and uh, different stakeholders to evaluate CPP compliance from either a really macro level and looking at key macro drivers, or can get really granular to look at individual performance of utilities, generators, portfolios, or individual assets. Next, Goran Voshevik, a senior associate at CRA, explains how CRA's NEEM and IFM models evaluate utility resource options from a lease cost and an earnings perspective to drive decision making in light of constraints like CPP. The North American Electricity and Environmental Model, or NEEM, is a linear programming model of the electricity markets in the U.S. and Canada. It is particularly suitable to finding a uh, set of planning decisions which lead to an optimal or cost minimizing solution. Uh, we are able to continue the analysis with the integrated financial model at a more detailed level where we look at a specific utility or a specific generator and perform our dispatch and produce a revenue requirement. Our work with many clients using NEEM, IFM and other tools has led to some interesting insights for clients. Rob Koenig, an associate principal at CRA, talks about how different CPP compliance approaches lead to different retirements and additions of capacity across the market. New builds and retirements also varied across the cases. Uh, we saw that in general, under rate-based approaches, the state preferred to build uh, additional renewable resources or build them sooner, whereas under um, mass-based approaches, it would tend to build uh, new fossil generation. Finally, Pat discusses how different stakeholders States, utilities, and IPPs can have vastly different preferences regarding how the state implements the CPP. In fact, uh, the state as a whole and one of the utilities preferred a rate-based compliance mechanism with access to a national trading market uh, in order to lower their costs. Whereas, on the other hand, a second utility uh, preferred access to a national trading market, uh, but they preferred to comply under a mass-based regime. And finally, an independent power producer, a combined cycle, uh, preferred a rate-based regime, uh, but that entity actually preferred no access to the wider market because it outcompeted other other stakeholders. Building robust resource plans demands that utilities consider a wide range of evolving uncertainties, including carbon limits and other environmental mandates. CRA has significant experience helping clients with these and other industry challenges.